Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I am in Sweden this week. Today I will share some tips on pronouncing can as in I can do it and can't as in I cannot do it in English. So let's dive in. I am not a pronunciation expert, but during my time in America, I made adjustments that helped people understand me better. When saying can, make the sound quick and sharp like this can. But when you want to say cannot, make the sound a bit longer and stronger like this can't. For can, start with your mouth in a neutral position. As you say can, lightly touch the roof of your mouth near the front teeth, but don't completely block the airflow. The sound is short and sharp. However, for cannot, begin with the short vowel sound, eh, as in can, then add a gentle release of air with your tongue, lightly touching the roof of your mouth for the t sound. Unlike a hard T sound, like in the word top, the T in can't is softer and less pronounced. For Japanese speakers, there are a couple of challenges. First, we don't have a E sound in Japanese, so this is something we have to practice. Second, Many Japanese English subject teachers teach the can sound as can't. So we end up remembering the wrong pronunciation. It's not can, it's can, right? So those are my amateur tips on pronunciation. But the next tip is even more meaningful in conversations. When you are focused on pronunciation of can and can't, you might miss the point of communication. When expressing that you are unable to do something or you are not allowed to do something, you don't need to say it in one perfect sentence. Instead of just saying, I can't, you can add more context. For example, you are invited to a movie this weekend, but you can't make it, you can say, Sorry, I can't. I have another plan this weekend. I can't because I will be out of town. I wish I could, but I can't. In conversations, words are important, but people understand your intention based on the context. So it's important to accept the imperfect nature of conversations. When we speak Japanese and make a mistake, we don't hesitate to restate the sentence. But when speaking English or any other language, we often try to perfect every single thing we say. It's crucial to remember people understand you based on the context, not just the words you speak. In fact, people don't always listen to every single word you say. So please keep that in mind. In practice, it's more valuable to add more information to your sentences than to perfect the pronunciation of one or two words. The more you can express, the better. I believe the same applies to Japanese conversations. Sometimes we misunderstand others' intentions based on certain words or expressions. However, in conversations, it's important to try to understand the other person's intentions or even ask for clarification. Communication is always a two-way process. Even if you say what you want to say word for word perfectly, it doesn't guarantee the other person will understand you perfectly. We are all different. So our understanding of our language, even our native language, varies. I would like to end today's video with a beautiful quote from Nelson Mandela. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.